You said at some point your father had anal sex with you. Is that right? Yes. And how old do you believe you were when that happened? I was in sixth grade. I guess I, I'm pretty sure I was 12. And was that within a year of the episode you previously described at 11? Yes. Now, you've mentioned earlier that um, he had made some efforts to accomplish anal intercourse with you that had been unsuccessful because it hurt you? Yes. And therefore he had stopped? Yes. And that was before the incident when you were 11 when he was violent, is that right? Yes. Now, the, when you were 12, do you recall the day that he succeeded? Yes. And was that a gentle process or not? No, not at all. What was it, Mr. Menendez? It was very, very painful. And do you know if on that occasion anyone else was in the home besides yourself and your father? No, I was alone in, in, in the house with my dad. Now, was there a part of your bed that was removable? Yes. And what was that part? It was a wooden slat that there were many of them under my bed, but um, he had taken one off and left it off. He being whom? My father. And when had he done that, removed one and left it off? Early on. I don't know what that means. Early on, when I was, I guess I was, before anything bad started to happen. Must before have been you were 11? Pen. Yes. But you were living in Pennington? Yes. And what would he do with the slat that he took off from the bed? He would wedge it underneath the door, under the doorknob, uh, and the carpet. So that no one could open the door from the outside? Yes. And I think you've already said your mother never came to the door anyway. No. So do you, did you have in mind at the time who that slat was supposed to keep out? Well, I thought it was to keep out anyone from coming in the room. It just happened that no one came to the room ever, but I didn't, I didn't know. Who were the candidates? Who were the other people who lived in this house? My mother and my brother, uh, and at some time, Diane. When Diane lived with you? Yes. Now, on this particular occasion, nobody else is home? No. No? Okay. No one else is home. Okay. And do you recall basically what happened? Yes. <coughs> basically what happened? Uh, my dad came in and told me to take off my clothes and uh, to kneel on the bed. And he closed the blinds and he put the slat underneath the door like he always did. And uh, they told me to bend over the footboard. This bed had a footboard and a headboard? Yes. And. Did you know what it meant to be told to bend over the footboard? Yes. He had had you do that before? Yes. That's when he tried to have sex with me, but wasn't able to. And did your father put anything on you or ask you to put anything on you? This time, he just did it himself. Usually, he, he told me to. What was it that was put on you? He had a Vaseline jar. And in the past, when he had tried to do this, he had had you put the Vaseline on? Yes, he put some on um, himself, and he put had me put them on myself. On this occasion, he put it on you? Yes. And what happened? And uh, he, he, he lined himself up, and he started going into me like he had always done, but this time he was going in too far. And I said, Dad, please, please stop. And... I said, Dad, you're hurting me, and he would just kept on going further. At one point, I just started screaming, and I started saying, stop, it hurts, it hurts. And uh, he just went all the way in. And did that hurt? Yes. And how did you react to that pain? I just sort of died off. I didn't, uh, I stopped screaming, and I just sort of left myself. You left yourself? I just pretended that it wasn't happening. I pretended that the pain wasn't happening, and I just... I just 
went away in my mind. Uh, it was too painful. When it was over, did you cry? I was crying during it. Okay. And after it was over, were you still crying? Yes. And did your father say anything to you at that time? Yeah, he had a towel on the bed, and he put the towel on the bed, and he had me sit on the towel so that I wouldn't get anything on the bed. And he said uh, very calmly, and looked at me, and uh, told me to look him in the eyes, and he said, next time you ever scream or yell, I'm going to beat you so bad you'll never be able to scream or yell again. Do you, uh, did it occur to you, did something occur to you about this episode concerning why he had uh, gone ahead when you were in pain? Yes. What was that? It was because uh, when I had screamed or yelled or cried out before, he had told me that if I ever did that, he was going to go all the way inside of me. That was on a previous occasion when he was trying to do this? Yes. So he kept his word? Yes. Did you believe, Mr. Menendez, as you were growing up, that your father was a person who would make good on his threats? Oh, yes. Now, did, uh, did your father, in this particular conversation, after this episode, um, strike that. Your father said to you that, that if you scream again, he'll make sure he hits you hard enough that you won't be able to cry or scream again? Yes. And did he explain to you whose fault that would be? Yes, he asked me whose fault it would be. He asked me if I understood, and I said yes. And he said, so if I ever do that, do you understand whose fault it'll be, or, or do you know why it will happen? And I said yes. Okay. And what did you, whose fault would it be? He made it very clear that it would be my fault. And I understood that it would. What did you do, uh, if anything, after this episode? Well, did your father leave after he had told you it would be your fault? Yes, he left and he closed the door. And when he told you this about whose fault it would be, what kind of mood was he in? He was in a very stern, very serious, uh, very strong um, mood. And what did you do after he had left? I sort of waited outside uh, the door in my bedroom, uh, listening to see where he had gone, and then just went to my bathroom and got in the tub. Took a bath? I took a hot bath and just promised myself to do whatever he wanted, never to scream, never to yell, never to cry. Just do what he wanted when it happened. Now, over the preceding uh, couple of years, talking about now you're, you're 12 when this happened, is that right? Yes. Over the previous couple of years, um, had, in the incidents with your father, had the talking stopped? Oh, yes. No, he told me that he didn't want me to say a word when he spoke, and he talked about silence. When, when he talked, he would talk, but he would never want me to say a word unless he spoke to me. And when he talked, he would give me lectures about silence, about the Romans, about the Greeks. He would, he would lecture me about different things. During the sex or during the visits that included sex? Is Either that while I was getting dressed or while I was undressing, um, sometimes in the middle, but usually not. And were you allowed to talk? No, not unless I, I uh, was asked a question. And did silence become the pattern? Yes, he told me all about silence. What about silence, Mr. Menendez? What did he tell you? He told me that silence was the greatest thing that man had. Uh, he said that it was the greatest power that anyone could achieve, and that with silence you could control anyone. And was there a time then when the sexual episodes with your father were totally and completely silent? Yes. When he would say nothing whatsoever? Yes, then it would be silent. And you would say nothing whatsoever? Yes. Now, was there, was there a time when se the sexual incidents that you have called nice sex began? 